Okay, it's going to be another classic Raw review followed up with the 25th anniversary of the In Your House Final Four uh, pay-per-view. But yeah, this, is a, this was a special Raw that took place on a Thursday. So we're going all the way back to February 13th, 1997. They actually branded this and trademarked it as Thursday Raw Thursday, believe it or not. And I think it actually has its own theme song. So let's get right down to it. First match of the night, we got Triple H's Hunter Hearst Helmsley taking on The Rock. Rocky Maivia at that time for the IC title. Very historic match. I think the first time The Rock ever won a belt in, in the WWE. Uh, but at the time, you know, Triple H was definitely, you know, the more experienced, more cerebral, more uh, seasoned wrestler. He really uh, carried this thing. You know, Jerry Lawler, that's the first time I think Jerry Lawler and uh, Jim Ross referred to Triple H as cerebral. And uh, eventually they started, Jim Ross is the one that started calling him the cerebral uh, assassin. So I think this is where it all started in terms of that. But yeah, you know, lots of Rocky sucks chants, lots of women and kids cheering for The Rock. Kind of a mixed bag in terms of the re reaction for The Rock. Rock kicked out of a lot of finishers here. A lot of abrupt kickouts of uh, tombstones, neck breakers. And yeah, good stuff. I, I thought this was better than the pay-per-view match. Rock didn't get a lot of offense in until the small package at the end but uh yeah rock cut a babyface promo with doc hendrix which was a, a little bit you know cheesy for the time but uh it was just a, it's just a sign of good things to come for the rock i mean he, the guy's really transformed his body and and his uh his character since then so it's just it's just uh that's the most amazing thing about it it's just you see where the rock has you know taken himself since 25 years ago it's uh and he even got got to see him at the super bowl last night he looks like he's in better shape than ever uh so move on to the headbangers the headbangers taking on bob holly and abdo montoya uh okay so during this match uh vince jerry lawler and jim ross were kind of breaking character and just reminiscing about the Shawn michaels injury vince even felt a little bit guilty he said he's partial feel like he was partially to blame because of the schedule and everything it was pretty good stuff and they reminisced about you know the Shawn michaels match quality uh vince even said that the bret hart match at wrestlemania was nothing short of spectacular and jim ross even mentioned the vader match the mankind match so it was basically just talking about Shawn the whole time the headbangers actually got a great reaction on the finish and then we move on from there. Next up, we got Shawn Michaels coming to the ring with the WWF Championship. And uh, Vince McMahon conducts the interview. So uh, Shawn Michaels actually forfeits the belt and um, loses his smile. Okay, so there's a, a lot to talk about here. And, um, you know, one of the reasons I wanted to review this Raw, I wanted to see exactly what happened leading up to this uh, Situation. I wanted to see if Sean had any matches on Raw where maybe you saw uh, him get injured. But the bottom line is this. Sean didn't wrestle on Raw uh, after the Royal Rumble. Uh, there was a couple of in-ring promos that were interrupted by, uh, you know, Brett and Sid and, and, and Vince. Um, so there really wasn't any matches. Uh, there was a Madison Square Garden show. I, I believe there was actually a Raw uh, at the Sky Dome, where maybe Sean had, a, I'm assuming Sean probably had to have a dark match on that show. So, yeah, the bottom line is you didn't really see Sean get injured, but uh, at this time, he went to a doctor after feeling some discomfort in his knee, and the doctor said he could never wrestle again, and he might be beyond reconstructive uh, knee surgery. So, it, it just seems to me like at that time, you know, the mid 90s, 1996, 97, um, you know, the. Um, Unless they would actually go in there and open up the knee. You, you, you just didn't really know, you know, how bad it was. I, I believe after Sean actually got it uh, opened up, I think it was Dr. James Andrews that, that, that told him, you, you know, you'll be out about four to six weeks. So I, initially, I don't think it was as bad as, uh, you know, s some of the doctors that, that misdiagnosed the injury. So uh, it, it, it kind of brings me back to the Kurt Angle situation, too. I remember Angle actually stated that uh, he... It took him like 10 doctors to get cleared for the Olympics. So I think that's the difference right there. You know, Angle was like relentless. He just had to find a doctor uh, that would clear him. Uh, but I, I think a, a lot of doctors, that's what they'll pretty much say just to cover their ass in, in case they get sued or anything comes back to bite them in the ass. It's like, you can't wrestle again. It's just kind of, you know, taking the easy way out by saying that. So, but yeah, at, at the time, I think Sean was definitely in some uh, knee pain. I mean, he looked like he was in pain. Um, but I, I think I think the problem is Sean really ran into problems 
when he started going on and on about the attitudes and it's it's really in to be tough right now and I have no toughness for anybody. And then he goes on this whole uh, tirade about how, you know, it doesn't mean anything to anybody else, but it means a lot to me that, you know, one thing I've noticed is that I've lost my smile and I, I got to get it back. So uh, it, it just kind of opened, it opened the box or it opened the, um, it opened the door up to discussing you know, maybe he's losing his smile because of the Bret Hart contract, or maybe he lost his smile because he can't handle the pressure of, you know, competing against WCW in the Monday Night Wars because they're losing in the ratings. So I, I think that's what got people talking. I think if Sean kept it, you know, very simple, like I have a knee injury and I don't know when I'm going to wrestle again, so here you go and just go back, go to the back. But Sean's a very emotional guy, as he said in the promo, and, um, you know, I guess his heart was just in, you know, going into depth about, you know, how he felt at the, at the time. But, yeah, it, it, it did it did seem to me that, you know, initially people really did buy the injury. You know, they actually went to Bret Hart after the promo and, and Bret basically cut a, you know, out of character promo about how he felt bad for Sean. And he said, nobody works harder than Shawn Michaels. And I just hope, you know, maybe one day he'll come back. So, yeah, it's just it's just fascinating how there was just so much uncertainty about the severity of the uh, of the injury, you know, at the time. I, I think what really ruffled some feathers and what really got you know people upset was that uh, I, I think Brett said uh, you know a couple weeks later Sean did a backflip just to kind of rub it in people's faces, and uh, you know that's that's where a lot of the negativity came in. And um, but you know to, to, to Shawn Michaels' credit, though, I, I don't think he. I don't think he wrestled until uh, May, so he 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 did sit out a long time. I'm sure it was bothering him, but I I I would just say this: I, I he he did mention that he just can't go half ass, and I I think a lot of times when you're in an environment that's very negative, or you know not so much negative but competitive, and you know a lot is at stake. And you can't give it 100%, very much like CM Punk was, you know, before he left. He did mention that, you know, the major reason he left was because of his health. And so I think a lot of times when you're when you're you're injured and you can't give 100%, sometimes you rather just kind of bow out gracefully and just, you know, not be a part of it at all. Because um, it's just it's just such a yeah, it's it, it's tough, man. It's tough. And you know, he's 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 never been one to to really give a half ass effort. So I, I definitely understand it from his part. But, you know, to, to Sean's credit, though, I don't I don't think he's ever come out and just said, like, yeah, I was I was faking the injury. He, you go up to him and he'll just say at that time, you know, we just we we just didn't know. We didn't have I think the, the exact quote was we didn't have Dr. James Andrews that would, you know, do an X-ray and, and tell you exactly how bad it was. And unless you actually opened the knee up and see, saw how bad it was. So I think this injury was probably more of a um, a meniscus tear, one of those meniscus injuries that you could actually shave and then come back, you know, about four to six weeks later. So I don't think it was like anything, you know, serious. But um, but at the time, you, you just you just never know. I, I, I do remember the Bernard King injury in the NBA and, you know, injuries like that. You know, you just you just rarely have seen people come back from 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 injuries that severe. So it's it's never anything to play around with. And uh, but yeah, but but I, I do I do think the promo is great, though. I, I, I thought it was great for that time. I, I, I thought I think Sean is great at these real life promos that have, you know, where you really get to know him from an emotional standpoint, and uh, yeah, the, the 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 promo did come off great. I, I I don't think Shawn Michaels is great at cutting kayfabe promos, so like a promo like this, where it's a little bit of a combination of both, which is perfect for him. And it was it was definitely definitely memorable. Um, I mean, yeah, the thing that sucked about it is you know you didn't get Shawn Michaels at uh, WrestleMania 13, but uh, but it did open the door up for. You know, Stone Cold and, uh, you know, Bret Hart to do their thing and for The Undertaker to finally have his moment. So in a lot of ways, it, um, you know, it all worked out for the company. But, yeah, it's it's definitely something to talk about. It's 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 definitely memorable. So if you haven't seen it yet, definitely go check it out. I wasn't aware of this, but at, at the time, apparently they, they showed this back like so many times that people actually got sick of it. So, uh, all right. So next up on the Raw, you actually, you actually had The Undertaker actually taking on Savio Vega. So Taker gets a clean victory over Savio. Good stuff while it lasted with the choke slam. Uh, Nation of Domination hits the ring and then Undertaker and Ahmed Johnson clean house. 
So a little bit of an alliance at this time between Taker and uh, Ahmed Johnson. So next up, you got Stone Cold Steve Austin taking on Psycho Sid. Um, yeah, so Austin and Sid. I, I don't think I, I think this might be one of the only times you've seen this combination. Uh, yeah, good punches from Sid here. I got to say, Sid's punches definitely got better at this point. Lots of good brawling here before Brett came in. So Brett was just like obsessed. Both Austin and Brett were just like obsessed with uh, punishing each other. So Brett comes in. Brett actually gets booed on the DQ finish because uh, I think that was something people wanted to see there. All right, so next up you got British Bulldog and Owen Hart taking on uh, Farouk and Crush. So, uh, yeah, th th this match wasn't anything too special. Owen actually was actually faking how ironic was it? He was actually faking a knee injury, and they got counted out and uh, led to a little bit of a scuffle between uh, Bulldog and Owen. Uh, then they cut to the Brett promo where he talks about how, you know, Sean is, uh, you know, no one works harder than Shawn Michaels. And uh, it's, it's just it's a sad day for everybody. And, yeah, Brett, Brett, Brett was upset at first, too, because, you know, that that's how you make money in the WWF, uh, you know, putting on compelling main events and, you know, promoting Sean versus Brett. And Brett had this idea of doing a, a trilogy and, um you know, making money with Sean, as, as he said in the uh, Greatest Rivalries uh, 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 documentary. So, uh, and then we get to the main event. We got Bret Hart taking on Vader. You know, the, the Bret Hart and Vader dynamic is uh, definitely interesting. Uh, you know, the, the match didn't really get too much time, but, you know, Bret, Bret said that he never liked working with Vader because Vader was just too uh, stiff. And, uh, you know, the, there was actually a, a lot of occasions where Bret actually got hurt from Vader and um, and you know Vader would always be very apologetic but you know it, it just seems like no matter what like Vader just he didn't know his own strength and j just had you know he, he Vader worked a very stiff style so it was it was it was very unnatural for him to to work a match with Brett and and really make sure that everything went smoothly so uh so yeah but you know it's just a shame that brett and vader didn't do more stuff i, I thought the combination actually worked here and it worked at the pay-per-view as well uh so so vader actually goes for the vader bomb and brett actually gets a clean victory i'm surprised that, that brett actually pinned cl vader clean before the pay-per-view very surprising but hey at least you got a clean finish you know austin was actually in the balcony you know uh, threatening to jump off and, and attack brett so you had that going on, and uh, and then we move on from there, and then we move on to the uh, the pay per view. Okay, so the pay per view was actually on February sixteenth, nineteen ninety seven. It was uh, in your house. It was called the Final Four. So it, when you look at the poster, it, it would have been interesting to see like if Sean didn't uh, vacate the championship. Yeah, I guess if Sean didn't vacate the championship, it just would have been a number one contenders match. And the winner faces Sean at WrestleMania. I think that that that's how they were going to do it. I guess Brett was going to win it, and it was going to be Brett versus Sean. But you know, uh, Vince actually thought it was way too predictable. So I, I think the the exact report was that that Vince decided to change the main event even before Sean uh, dropped the belt. Because I remember him saying it was too predictable. But uh, but yeah, that was probably the plan instead of being for the championship. You know the winner of this uh, this final four match was going to um, you know main event WrestleMania. So let's get right down to it. So the show had an attendance about over six thousand. They were in Chattanooga, Tennessee, very small venue. It didn't feel like a big market type of feel or anything like that. A lot of the Raws just felt like very uh, small at this time. Um, so yeah, the WWF still had a long way to go. It, j it just felt like with this roster, there was just so many guys that didn't become stars yet. You know, um, you know, from The Rock to Triple H to, to e e even Austin on the show. Like Austin, I got I got to say, Austin did not get the type of fan support that he got in 1998. Like nowhere near as close. He was still kind of treated as a heel uh, to a degree. Uh, probably the last last time ever. Um, so let's get right down to it. So first match of the night, we got Mark Merrow with Sable uh, taking on Leaf Cassidy to open up the show. Just pretty much standard stuff. You know, nice feel-good victory from Mark Merrow and Sable over uh, Al Snow, who's actually playing the Leaf Cassidy uh, still with the Rockers attire. So next up, we got the Nation of Domination of Cross Farouk and Savio Vega getting pretty much a generic victory over Bart Gunn, Flash Funk, 
and uh, gold dust, the match just kind of felt thrown together. Uh, so yeah, th this undercard was really kind of, uh, not bad, but it was just kind of uh, lacking in, in importance. I would definitely say that. And next up, we got the rematch from Raw. This time we got Rocky Maivia uh, defeating Hunter Hearst Helmsley. Uh, for the Intercontinental Championship. Okay, so the most interesting thing about this match was Goldust. So Goldust was going to take on uh, Triple H at WrestleMania. So Goldust actually distracts Hunter. Rock hits a not very Chris, not very Chris Benoit like uh, German suplex to pin Triple H. And uh, so Marlena actually comes out with Goldust, and and you know after the match is over, after Triple H and Goldust were. Uh, we're confronting each other. China actually comes right from behind Marlena, Terry Runnels, and just starts choking her out. And then Goldus is like, get get that bitch out of here. So, yeah, so I think that's the first time you've ever seen uh, China. She looked huge at the time. So I, I, I think the story was that Triple H and Sean actually met her at a gym, and, uh, and they were so impressed with her. Uh, because she was able to outbench Triple H, and I, th I think tr the story is that Triple H had to lie to, to some of the workout buddies and say he was he was dealing with an injury. So, yeah, so that was like the whole start of uh, China. But that wasn't the most memorable thing. The most memorable thing um, that China did was uh, it might have been at the next Raw where she came out and just started doing the bear hug to Mar uh, Marlena. That was actually more memorable. So uh, I don't think I had ever seen. Uh, uh, this one, this is just more of a choke, and the security kind of uh, uh, escorted her out of the building. So move on from there. Next up, we got Doug Furness and Phil Lafon uh, taking on Owen Hart and British Bulldog. Yeah, good stuff. While this was going, this is great stuff. You know, Owen and Bulldog worked a lot with Furness and Lafon. So yeah, ninety six, ninety seven, man. Furness and Lafon going from ECW, having the good matches with RVD and Sabu, and. They worked with Owen and, and, and Bulldog a lot uh, at this time. Th this felt like it was on the way to being, you know, the best match that they had. Uh, but Owen actually hits the British Bulldog with his Slammy, his Slammy Award uh, trophy. And the ref actually calls for the DQ. But, hey, while it was going, this was, uh, th this, this was definitely the best match of the night. Okay, so next we'll move on to the Four Corners Elimination Match for the vacant WWF Championship. I got to say, this this was a great main event. Th this was probably the best main event of 1997 until you get to Canadian Stampede. Um, you know, at the time, they didn't really do a lot of triple threat matches. So it was really cool to see, you know, guys like Brett, Austin, and, and Undertaker, you know, in the same match competing for the championship. It, it, it's just at that time, you didn't really see a lot of that stuff. You know, most of Brett's matches, title matches, were always one-on-one. -on -one. So, you know, Bret Hart was never... You know, they didn't really start doing triple threats until after we went to WCW. So it, it, the, the environment was definitely something different, especially at that time. Uh, so the rules of the match are pretty cool. You know, it was this was basically like a a Royal Rumble rematch. So this is these are the last four guys uh, involved at the Royal Rumble 1997. Obviously, that was controversial because Austin won behind the referees back and the referees didn't see. Uh, Austin get eliminated so this is kind of like a redo of the Royal Rumble but you know they they tried to state that there's so many times in sports where the referee where they can't go back to replay and the referees don't see it so why not just have the same thing in the WWF so that was like Austin's argument for stating that he, he should he should be the winner of the Royal Rumble but they were they decided to you know do it over here and uh, this wasn't just a regular Royal Rumble match this is actually a no DQ match you could eliminate these guys over the top rope or by submission or by pinfall. So, yeah, pretty cool stipulation. None of the pinfalls really came into play. Neither did any of the submissions. All the eliminations ended up being over the top rope. But, uh, but yeah, you know, Brett and Austin were just kind of brawling with each other. Vader and Taker, you know, uh, I think they had a match at the Rumble, so they were still feuding at this time. You know, Taker actually... Did a big boot to Vader on the steel chair. The chair actually busted Vader open from the eye. So Vader has like blood flowing from uh, above his eye the whole the whole match. So yeah, v Vader was the MVP in this match. I thought he worked his ass off. I thought he took most of the bigger bumps. Uh, Austin was just relentless. Even after Austin got eliminated, he just being a pain in the ass wouldn't wouldn't uh, go back to the locker room. So Brett actually eliminates Austin with the fireman's carry. And when Austin got eliminated, though, like not a lot of booze, 
you know, maybe like one one guy in the front row was wearing an Austin 316 shirt, but it wasn't like some of the bigger markets like Chicago, which was WrestleMania or Survivor Series 96 at Madison Square Garden. Some of the smaller Raws at the Manhattan Center, they were more pro Austin. This is a very small town in the south. Uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee. So they were clearly on Undertaker's side here. You know, Taker definitely had a connection with this audience for whatever the reason. Um, but yeah, I just want to make the point that Austin wasn't like extremely over like he was at WrestleMania. So uh, so the, the fans are pretty much happy to see Austin get eliminated. So then it came down to, uh, you know, Vader and Taker did some really cool stuff. You know, Vader goes for a moonsault, misses... Uh, tries to go, tries to hit Taker with the Vader bomb. Taker actually gets up, low blows Vader. Vader goes over the uh, the top turnbuckle. The camera starts to shake, and Jerry Lawler sells it well. He's like, "Oh, the crowd is going crazy. This, this whole building is shaking." And it looked like it was because the camera started shaking for whatever the reason. And then, uh, you know, then Austin comes back out, and he's trying to, you know, the referees and Pat Patterson trying to hold Austin back, and. Austin unintentionally screws Undertaker. So Brett actually goes for a small package to Taker, which looked really cool. Really nice near fall there. And then Austin gets back up and he's 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 trying to go for Brett and 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 T Taker's trying to punch Austin out of the ring. Just being a pain in the ass. And then Brett actually uh ends up clotheslining the Undertaker out of the ring to win the WWF championship for the for the fourth time. So this is actually Bret Hart's shortest uh, reign. So Sid is actually watching this match from the back, and he looks like he's throwing a fit. Like he's like, I don't know, I don't know, what, I don't know what he was, what Vince told him, but he he just looked angry and he just couldn't like sit back and relax. It was kind of funny, but uh, but yeah, after Bret celebrates and has his moment, Sid comes to the ring and they have the rematch on Raw the next night. So so yeah, this is the shortest reign that Bret ever had. Uh, I believe he actually lost it to Sid the next night. And I think he lost to Sid again in a steel cage match uh, a couple of weeks later where he cut that promo on Vince where he said, frustrated is an award for it. This is bullshit. So, uh, so yeah, you know, um, yeah, it, it's, it sucks that Brett didn't go in the WrestleMania as champion. Uh, I, I think it would have been cool, but uh, I think at the time Vince kind of thought, you know, you know, have Brett and, and Austin should be an undercard match to turn Austin face because, you know, uh, Austin, you know, I think I think if Austin and Brett were for the championship, it, it probably would have hurt Austin in the long run. But uh, I, I think going with Brett and Austin on the undercard and they're doing the Austin face turn, I think it worked out for the better. I, I, th I think Vince kind of thought, you know, it needed to be more of a slow burn. To, to you know to, to have to have Austin uh you know main event WrestleMania so uh so they actually went with the Undertaker and Sid you know have you know give Taker his moment you know it wasn't the original plan but uh you know that that's exactly what happened there but yeah you know th this is a good main event very underwhelming undercard it, it's just when I when I watch the show back I'm just like man like the every single pay per view. You know, like when you look at the pay-per-views in 2001, it just, it just felt like every single pay-per-view felt like a big deal. This uh, this just didn't feel like a, a, a big show at all. But uh, but yeah, the the main event was definitely a way to rectify the controversy from Roy Rumble. And uh, yeah, Brett would get his moment here, but it was very short-lived. That's pretty much it, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the reviews. Uh, and I'm out. All right.